Hi, this is Jonathan Smith. In this video, I'm going to cover how to use Spring's Java Config style, Java Config, to work with Maven, JUnit, Log4J, Hibernate, and HyperSQL. We have a lot to cover, so I'm going to go at a pretty rapid pace, but you can always go to my website at jonathanmarksmith.com and cover this. I posted this on my blog, so feel free to go back to my website anytime to cover anything. Also, if you ever have any questions at any time, please feel free to email me or find me on Twitter. I'll be more than happy to help anyone working with Springs. So what we're going to cover is right now is I really feel that developers should not be using MySQL, DB2, or other heavy databases on their local workstations as they're developing. And I am a big uh, fan of having the whole environment on your workstation. So I feel that you should have maybe JBoss, Tomcat, and your database on your own workstation so you are the master of your own domain and doing all your work so you can work remotely so let's just go through a quick example as you see this is my main class and I'm basically setting up a a config application contents pointing to this thing called a database configuration class what this is and we'll get into it in a couple of seconds, this is me using the new Springs Java configuration style to set up my beans, my data sources, and everything else I might need without using XML files. XML files are the old school way of doing things, 2002. This is 2013. We're going to do things better ways. So as you see, my main just basically sets that up. Then I get a bean, and uh, it's beans called a message bean. I set hello world to it and then I save it to a thing called my service. Okay, if, if you see, I'm actually getting my service out of my main class. And then I'm actually setting another message into my message bean, sending it to my service again saying save message. And then I get back a list from my service class. It's a list of message beans. And then from there, I just use some log for j to say debugging how many I have. And I go then through the loop and I print them all. And then I do a log for j. This is a this is the end. And I print out this is the end. Uh, you could actually go through my site and actually go through class plug class. I'm going to actually go into the code using IntelliJ. First thing I'm going to do is, as you can see, I ran the code once and it says you have two messages. Two messages in the database. The first one is message one, hello world, and the second message is I love Regan. And then at the end, it's this is the end. These are the two messages I put into my database, and then I went through my database and I read everything out. Let's actually bring up some code in IntelliJ. I love using IntelliJ. I think it's miles over Eclipse. It's easy to work with, and the support from them is great. This is my main class, as you could see. It's exactly as what I had on my blog, but you can actually go to GitHub, download this at any time, play with the code, change the code, and see how it works. And again, as you see, I'm getting uh, the database configuration. And let's open up the database configuration right now. You can see I have the configuration. I enable transaction management on this. And I say where to scan for components. And I say, actually, this is a little trick. I say the base package class of this class. So basically, I say from any packages from this class down, scan for components. And then I do bring in a config file, which is basically has some information in. And one thing I would like to show is that since I'm using HyperSQL, every time my system starts, the database is empty. So what I like to do is on this initiator, initializer, sorry, I, I like to run this script. This script, if you go into my resources, it's basically a schema script that actually says, if this table exists, drop it. And then I do a create a table with just a key and a string. It's pretty easy, pretty basic, but it gets the job done. From there, I then set up a data source that points to my uh, hyper database and sets up the password and username and the URL. And by this, you can see I'm using in memory. Then, of course, you got to go down and do all your basic Hibernate stuff. So you have all my Hibernate properties 
and all the whatnot. And uh, I just and this is basically everything that you need to get the database going. Now, if you go here, I just want to show you some basic stuff. Let's go into my my model. Hey, my model is nothing more than a, a being that has some hibernate stuff there that maps to the database. As you see, it says the table to use. It says which field is the key field. There's ID. It says it's generated auto. That's the ID field. And then it has message and it has get message sex message. So basically, my table is an ID of the column and a string. That's about it. Now let's go into my service layer. And again, I am going pretty quick, but you can cover any of this stuff on my website and always feel free to Twitter me for questions. Here's my interface to my message service. I have two function calls. One is list messages that returns a list of messages. And the other one is save a message that takes a message in as a parameter. Let's go in and see the code for them. As you can see, I auto wire my DAO and in the constructor I set up my log for J stuff and on the list message I do nothing more than call to my DAO and say list messages and then I return the list. On my save message I take the message that was passed to me and I pass it to the save or update message function in my DAO. Now let's go into my DAO. Of course, like always, I like to use interfaces so it makes it easy to change stuff up and up, uh, up, sorry, down the road if you need to. Okay, now I have two functions again list that will return a list and save or update message. Let's go into first the list. The list is pretty basic hibernate stuff. If you see, I just basically use hibernate and I go to my session factory, I get the current session, and I say give me a list of message classes back, and I write to log for j log if there's an error. This will return a list of all the message beans in the message class. It's pretty easy. Hibernate makes it very easy to do stuff like this. Now let's go and see the save and save or update message beans. This again, in Hibernate, it's pretty easy to work with. Set up my hibernate stuff. I tell it that it's not read only. I'm getting passed in a message object. I get uh, uh, I get my session factory. So and then I get my current session to it. And then I basically say, here's my session. Save that bean. Then I flush it and then I write out any errors. This is all the all you need with hibernate to save data to the database. Hibernate makes it so easy. So. Let's just go over this again very quickly. This is my main class. Brings in the database configuration, which we covered right here. It's pretty basic stuff. Again, the key to this is, an, is the initializer that will set up the schema to the database. Because I love doing this because then I don't need my SQL, Oracle, or DB2 on my workstation. I have everything inside my project, everything I need. Makes it a lot easier to work remotely. Then from there, I basically set up a message and I go through and then my two messages. Let's just play around and change this around just to pro. Let's just say this this is for my 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 demo and now we're going to just say run this. And as you see in Intel J it's very easy to run and I'm going to go here, and it's still building the code. Now it's getting ready for the output. And as you could see, it said, let's go down, let's put it in. This is the first message that returns the count from the list size that says you have two messages in your database, and this is the two messages. It's pretty easy to use Hibernate, hi uh, Hibernate, Maven, Log4j, all with Spring's Java configuration. If you have any more questions about this, please feel free. I'll be more than happy to help you. But I did go through this at a very quick pace. So please feel free to go to my website, which again, it's at jonathanmarksmith.com and look for how to use Spring's Java configuration style with Maven, JUnit, Log4j, Hibernate, 
and HyperSQL. That's everything we just covered in a few minutes. So feel free to go to my website, check it out. Send me comments on Twitter. Send me comments on uh, Google+. I would love to hear your feedback. Thank you, and hopefully I'll be speaking to you soon.